I'm standing here in my city of Baltimore, and I saw in 2015 when my neighborhoods were almost burned to the ground because of the injustice that we saw here. So now we're standing here in Baltimore, and we're saying to all of you in Sacramento, we hear you, and we will stand united with you together as Muslims, as black people, as brown people, as just people in general, to tell you that we will stand for justice and we will not accept brutality of any kind. And we will fight systemic racism and inequality of any kind. And so I stand here together with my sister Zainab Chaudhry from CARE and many of the beautiful brothers and sisters that are here to speak and to share with you how we as Muslims, as we as black people, and we as human beings will stand together and fight for justice. So I just want to take a moment to introduce my sister and welcome the crowd. Thank you very much. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Imam Mikhail Smith to please share a few words. Please use the microphone, it's much better. Assalamu alaikum to everyone here. Peace and blessings be upon everyone. And I want to congratulate you on fulfilling and holding on to the prophetic sunnah, the prophetic tradition of standing up to injustice whenever it occurs. We will stand up, we will sit down. We will kneel, we will do whatever it takes. We will speak when told to be silent. We will be silent when told to speak. Whatever it takes to let people know that enough is enough. Too many lives have been taken. Too many lives have been taken. And for too long in my country, it has for some reason been legal to take the lives of black men. For some reason, it has been always justified to take the lives of my forefathers, my grandfathers, my fathers, and my brothers. And as Muslims, we have a responsibility. We have to respond to the injustice that we see. It is a prophetic quality. It is the sunnah or the way of our beloved prophet. And it is the sunnah of our Excuse prophet me. Musa as well. Excuse me. When he saw the injustice around, when he saw what was going on that was wrong and the, the systemic oppression of a whole category of people, he said to himself, enough is enough. We have no room for cowardice anymore. We have no room to quiet down. We have to speak up. We have to speak up and we have to let the world see what is going on in this country. We let, have to let the world know that there is injustice on the shores of the country that should represent freedom to the whole entire world. We have to let everyone know, first and foremost, as Muslims, we have a responsibility to God. We have a responsibility to maintain and be people who strive to maintain justice in this world. Brothers and sisters, I will say it again. We will stand, we will sit, we will kneel. We will speak when told to be silent. We will be silent when told to speak. Whatever it takes, we will get the message across that enough is enough in the murder, the murder of our people. Our people must stop. I pray that Allah give us strength. I, I pray that Allah give us strength. I pray that Allah give strength to the, st to the family of Stefan Clark. I pray that Allah give strength to all of those who have suffered for this systemic, systemic oppression of a category of people. 
I pray that Allah give us the ability to open our eyes and understand it is our responsibility to be the causes of change and not mere passive watchers of the change that happen. God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. Takbir! 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 And for all of my brothers and sisters that may not be Muslim, we're saying that God is great, that we are all coming together to stand for justice together. And so one brother that has been very close to the situation, Brother Imam Omar Suleiman, I would like to invite you to come up to the mic and share your words with us, brother. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Peace be with you all. Alhamdulillah, all praises be to Allah. All of you are standing here because you believe in something. And because you recognize that this is a systemic problem, that this is an entire structure. And I want you to recognize how interconnected this all is. Around the country, you have people that are trying to maintain idols of white supremacy and Confederate memorials. They care more about stones dedicated to their racist ancestors than they care about actual black bodies that should be living. They care more about keeping hate raised and making sure that hate is not tear torn down. And if we can't begin to tear down hate, how can we raise love in this country? How can we actually bring people around any type of universal ideals if we cannot even agree that it is a crime that almost a thousand people were shot by the people that are supposed to protect them last year. That almost 300 people have been murdered by the police in 2018. If there was a terrorist group in this country that killed almost a thousand people a year, it would be on the news every day. It would be in our ears all the time. And if that terrorist group was saying Allahu Akbar, you better believe that we wouldn't be here that we would all be in internment camps. And then people have the nerve to say, it's just a few bad cops. Let's say it as it is. Police uniformly, uniformly, disproportionately target communities of color. This is not a one-off. This is not an exception. Last night in the convention, I spoke about a woman who never even got a hashtag. Dr. Jamila Arshad, may Allah have mercy on her, who was a neurologist who used to intern here at Franklin Square Hospital, who was murdered by police in my city of New Orleans and got no justice. We're not going to allow for people to be turned into hashtags anymore. We're not going to allow for people to be demonized anymore. And if people are more concerned with making sure that there are no riots and that freeways are not blocked off, and that people can't get into basketball games instead of young black men being systemically murdered in this country, then those people don't deserve to drive freely on a freeway. Those people don't deserve to go to a basketball game uninterrupted. Business should not be as usual because when business is as usual, multiple people get murdered a day. So we don't want business as usual. We're not calling to violence. We're asking the police to stop being violent. And because we've asked for too long and demanded policy changes for too long to no avail whatsoever, then we will keep raising our voices and we will keep disrupting because when we say no justice, no peace, that means that there is no peace without justice right. and people don't deserve people don't deserve to go about business as usual in the name of calm when Stefan's kids will never get to be in their father's arms again and, and again when Jordan Edwards father will never get to hug him again even though he raised an outstanding son and did everything he was supposed to do as a father but a terrorist and yes, I'm calling him a terrorist. Roy Oliver was a terrorist. Came from Iraq, comes here as a military veteran, still thinks he's in the battlefield in Iraq. It's not enough to murder brown babies overseas. And puts a gun to Jordan Edwards' head and murders him. We're going to make sure that he doesn't get away with it. We're going to make sure that this doesn't continue to happen. And. When we are told that we are the ones who are being disruptive, we will say that it's the ones that are in the uniforms that are being disruptive to our peace. And no, this isn't an indictment of all cops. 
No, it's not an indictment of all police officers. You can continue to try to shut down anti-police brutality work by calling it anti-police, but you're not going to police our voices when we say no. Right, Stop right. killing our people. Right. Stefan was one of ours. Jordan was one of ours. Jamila was one of ours. And you know what? That flag, that flag that flies half staff right now, these flags do not usually fly half staff when these black bodies are murdered, when these people are killed. Every single time an officer loses his life in the line of duty, there are rightfully so memorials texts written by organizations. People come together and grieve for the community. Rightfully so. If an innocent man is killed, we stand with that innocent man. Rightfully so. But when these people are killed, Freddie Gray is killed, Stefan Clark is killed, Tamir Rice, hashtags don't pay bills, people. They don't get state memorials. They get state prosecution. They get character assassinated. They get people saying that they deserve to be killed because they had gold teeth or had tattoos or wore hoodies. That's what they get. So don't tell me there is an equity of pain. There is no equity of pain. And don't equate plights here. We will not allow for our brother to keep getting killed. Stefan is being murdered right now as we speak in the media. His family is being murdered right now with their reputation. We don't even allow them to have the peace of burying their loved one, of burying their loved one and starting to try to move on in life with the new circumstances because they have to go to court and try to file suits and usually to absolutely no avail, watch videos over and over again of their loved ones being killed. They have to watch people talk about how their father was murdered because he deserved to be murdered. And I just want you to think about this, and this is my last comment here. People keep watching the videos and everyone suddenly becomes an analyst when it's a black person that's murdered and finds an excuse for the cops. The police, as they, as they charged that Stefan, never identified themselves as officers. And they say, why did he turn away and run? The way that police have been acting in this country, if they identify themselves as police officers, he still should have turned away and ran away because that's what they've been doing. That's what they've been doing. Philando didn't run from the police. Alton Sterling didn't run from the police. Jordan Edwards didn't run from the police. So don't tell me this is Stefan's fault for turning around and running away. And because maybe he allegedly, allegedly vandalized. You managed to pull Dylan Roof, a white terrorist, after murdering nine people in worship, you managed to pull him out of a church untouched where America could continue to stare him in the face as he sits unrepentant on the stand over and over again. And you tell me that because a man allegedly vandalized or was it Philando's broken tail light? Allegedly vandalized that you get to put that many bullets in his back. Tell me that this is civilized. Tell me that this is a democracy. Tell me that we don't have organized terrorism right now against communities of color. May Allah have mercy on you, Stefan. We will fight for you, and we will continue to raise our voices. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. No justice. No justice. No justice. No peace. Hands up. No Maurice Cook, who is here today on his holiday. Brothers and sisters, today is Easter, for those of you who don't remember. He is here today to stand in solidarity with us as we stand in solidarity with his community, with our community, to say enough is enough. We will not stay silent. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. When I say this is the time for things to change, Repeat me twice. Repeat after me twice when I say, this is the time for things to change. This is the time for things to change. This is the time for things to change. 
Last night I watched a powerful video of a speech by a member of Stefan Clark's family. The young sister spoke of the psychological damage in our communities, created and maintained for years due to the unaddressed trauma and neglect in the black community across this nation. At the end of her speech, this powerful sister declared, it is time for things to change. It is time for things to change. It is time for things to change. In this spirit, we are all here today, determined to join this fight with our brothers and sisters in the streets in Sacramento. This is the time for things to change. This is the time for things to change. This is the time for things to change. We are here today, together, fighting for justice for our black Muslim brother, Stefan Clark. Say his name. Clark. Say his name. Clark. Say his name. Clark. We are here today together to show the nation that the bonds of love that link our communities are too strong and that we will not sit and watch the police from across the nation continue to murder our brothers and sisters. This is the time for change. This is the time for change. This is the time for change. We are here today on the Christian day of the resurrection, the replenishing the rebirth of the spirit. We are here today as Muslims, Jews, Christians, believers, non-believers, black, white, brown, young, and old to continue to stand up and fight back. And we will dismiss, we will cast out the evil of racism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism. This all grips our nation and we have to, we have to address it. This is the time for change. I'll close the statement addressing the Sacramento Police Department. You can lie and deny to justify the debate, to equivocate for semblance of justice before you exonerate. It's all a sham, but most look away from who's to blame while black mothers continue their function of carrying this nation's shame. Reality is so different from what is moral and what is right and what is true. Another sacrifice in this country's need to claim that hell is black when all we see is blue. This is the time for things to change. This is the time for things to change. This is the time for things to change. Thank you. The people united will never be defeated. 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 I love it. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Next I want to bring on uh, Delegate Bilal Ali from uh, Baltimore City. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am very elated to see everybody got the memo. But the problem is, you got the memo too late. And what I mean by that is that we have the national spokesperson, Sarah Huckabee, saying that this is just a local issue. No, it isn't. Let me say this again. The chief spokesman for number 45 said that this is a local issue. Oh. How mad noon is that? 100%. I mean, it, it, it's totally insane. And the, the issue is this. This has been a systemic issue since the beginning of people of color touching these shores. Right. We have empirical data that clearly shows that these type of atrocities have been happening to people of color for years. Right here in the city of Baltimore in 2015, we had Freddie Gray who was killed for no more than a reason running while black. It wasn't no charge. He had did nothing that would constitute a person being apprehended and certainly not killed. 
And for those of y'all who do not know, I worked in the Baltimore City State's Attorney Office during that time. We know that the Baltimore City Police Department was complicit in not disclosing certain evidence. That's why the Baltimore City State's Attorney had to use another law enforcement agent to try to ascertain records that were clearly destroyed. Their text messaging had been deleted. So what type of justice is that? Right here recently, we just had one of the worst corruption trials here in Baltimore City, the Gun Tra uh, Trace Task Force, that when you have cops that are robbers, nobody wins. And just to think that you had a recent class of police cadets that the majority of them fail constitutional police. At least they did a little better than number 45. He couldn't spell constitution. <laughs> and now he has an attorney general that's perpetrating a fraud in the Department of Justice saying that he won't look into civil rights violation. He won't bring charges when clearly now, I'm not a rocket scientist, that's not my profession, but I know when you shoot at someone 20 times and hit them eight times in the back, it's no apparent threat to your life or anyone else. It seems like that person is trying to flee away from a situation as opposed to being aggressive. So my message to you is this. Let's organize make sure that you continue to put the pressure on the powers to be. Because if you do not show up, you'll be just like Ralph Edison. I don't know if some of y'all know who Ralph Edison is. He had a very uh, famous book. The title of the book was Invisible Man. And that's what's happening when people do not recognize your constitutional rights, your rights as a human being. We're not talking about differentiation, about ethnicity and things of that nature. I'm talking about human beings. The other thing, why are you here in Baltimore City, if you're here for the convention, please be conscious of how you interact with uh, government officials and law enforcement because this is really not no joke. Everybody is not pleased that approximately over the uh, course of the three days that you'll have 25,000 uh, Muslims visiting here in Baltimore. I done got all type of calls. Bilal, what's going on downtown? It looks like uh, Medina or, or Mecca. <laughs> so I said, I said alhamdulillah. <clears throat> but please continue to stand up for your rights those brothers who have lost their life, please continue to stand up and let your voice be here. I'm very pleased with the turnout, but after this, we just can't stop. Right. You know, you can't just show up for a social gathering to get on Instagram and, and Facebook Live and all that. This is seriously than, than that. Right. You know, uh, get with uh, uh, care. And Sister Zainab, assalamu alaikum. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Stop the murder, stop the hate. 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 Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Stop the murder, stop the hate. Stop the murder, stop the hate. Stop the murder! Stop the hate! I'd like to call Imam Khalid Griggs to please share a few words. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. If you can speak with the speaker, Kareem. Kareem. Peace be unto all of you. Kareem. Last night, I got a very unfortunate phone call. That phone call was informing me that in the community of which I am a part, one of our Muslim brothers was shot and killed by the police in very questionable circumstances. 
And so this is very near and dear to every one of us in this gathering and in this country. Stefan Clark did not deserve to be killed by a killer cop, just as Walter Scott was killed in Charleston, South Carolina, shot in his back while he was getting, trying to flee from a killer cop. Brothers and sisters, too often we hear this expression that the reason why these cops are killing black men is because they are afraid of them. And so I say that if you are afraid of this segment of the population, find another job. There's no excuse to kill men of any color, of any religion. It's no excuse that I am afraid of these people and this is why I'm killing them. Brothers and sisters, this is a very pivotal moment, not just for this nation, but for the Muslim community as well. When so many of us heard that Stefan Clark had been murdered, many of us just shook our heads and said, another black man has been killed. And then those of us from the Muslim community found out, well, Stefan Clark was a Muslim. And for too many in the Muslim community, this is the only time that this became important. When we found out that this African-American man was a Muslim, then we decided that this was important. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we know he has, has raised us as the best of communities, and I'm talking to the Muslims, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised us as the best community, you and I have to feel for every human being whose life has been taken unjustly. Right. How in the world, how in the world can we sit and watch other human beings being targeted and murdered the way that they are? and then have to hear that he was a Muslim or he belonged to this church or he belonged to the synagogue before we are touched emotionally and moved to do something about it. Brothers and sisters, now is the time for all of us when we hear about another African-American being shut down in the streets as Brother um, Imam Umar Suleiman has said, this is a systemic problem. It just didn't start when Trayvon Martin was killed. In 1966, the Black Panther Party was organized in this country on the West Coast because of police terrorism, police brutality, and police killing African Americans in Oakland and in throughout California. Nothing has changed. Our attitude, our response must change. Right. So now when we hear about a black man being shot, whether he is Muslim or not, let's take the position that all black lives matter. Right. Yes. yes. All black lives matter. 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 I want to bring on uh, my sister that's come from New York, but, but she has caused ripples throughout the entire world with the Women's March, where women all over the world stood up and took their rightful place as leaders. Because female is not the future, we know that female is right now and it always has been. It always has been. So let's bring on our sister, our leader, our queen, Sister Linda Sarsour. Assalamu alaikum. Sisters and brothers, I am never surprised when a 
young unarmed black men or women is killed at the hands of those who are supposed to protect and serve us. But let me make it real clear. While I may not be surprised, I am outraged every single time. Ella Baker said that the killing of black men and black mother's son must become as important as the killing of white mother's son. And for those of us who believe in freedom, will not rest. Sisters and brothers, as a Palestinian Muslim American, as a light-skinned Arab American, I am not an ally to black people. Black people are members of our ummah, are members of our Muslim family. So when you see somebody in my face out in these streets, I march first and foremost for the black people in my community, for my black sisters and brothers. This terrorism happening against communities of color will not end until a square like this has millions of Muslims out here in the streets demanding enough is enough. Allah will not be pleased with us when he knows that the Muslim community in America sat back when black men and women were being killed on the streets of our community. It is not enough for you, sisters and brothers, to come to a comfortable rally. What is it that you do every day in your towns, in Baltimore, in Brooklyn, in Oakland, California, in Dallas, in Houston, on the streets of Chicago? Every single one of us lives in a city where our police departments take innocent lives every single day. You may not think it's every single day because you may not see that hashtag, but sometimes these people who are precious are left unnamed and faceless to our communities. Sisters and brothers, Stefan Clark deserved to live. He was a partner, a husband. He was somebody's son and somebody's grandson. Until a Muslim believes that these people, that our brothers and sisters are in our community are truly our brothers and sisters, then we are not truly living up to the standard of being the Muslim ummah that Allah created. Sisters and brothers, do not leave it to the communities who are already traumatized and terrorized. We cannot expect the mother of a dead child or the wife of a dead child in time of mourning to fight for justice for their loved ones. It is incumbent on you to allow people to mourn and for you to stand and continue to demand justice. That's what right. we need right now, sisters and brothers, that we don't have yet in the Muslim community is consistency and persistency. Our deen is about consistency and persistence. That's why, sisters and brothers, we pray five times a day. That's why we have rules and regulations and things to follow so we could be consistent people. And until we are consistent voices for justice, you are not living up to being a whole Muslim. At this convention, we sat in room after room where scholar after activist after scholar have told you that activism is not a choice, sisters and brothers. It is your Muslim obligation to stand against injustice, even if it's against your own parents, against yourselves. What kind of people are you when our religion tells us that we must stand up against injustice and it allows us to stand up against our own parents if we see our parents committing injustice. I don't want to hear another Muslim that tells me, oh, I don't want to be political, Sister Linda. I'm not really into politics. News flash, you woke up this morning, you're Muslim, you're political. This country has politicized you, has racialized you as a community. And I'll end by saying this to my black Muslim family. We have disappointed you many times. The communities I come from have disappointed you many times. We have turned away from you sometimes. We did not respond with our salams to you when you gave us that smile and that salam. And I tell you every single day when I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, how can I be better? How can I treat you like the beautiful human being that Allah created? I ask my immigrant Muslim community, our children of immigrants, that you unite in our community and that you see your black 
sisters and brothers, as whole human beings that have made our ummah whole. Sisters and brothers, none of us could be Muslim in this country if it wasn't for the lineage that we have that goes back to enslaved African Muslims who sacrificed for you to be Muslim in this country. This work that I do is in the pathway of our ancestors that lost their lives. So when people, sisters and brothers, tell us to go back to our country, we say you brought us here because you brought our enslaved African Muslim family to this country. You forced them here. So, sisters and brothers, we built this nation. Muslims built this nation with their sweat and blood and tears. And when you talk about Islamophobia, sisters and brothers, just sit for a second and reflect on your black Muslim ancestors who endured torture under the watch of a slave master. You know nothing about Islamophobia. You know nothing what it means to live under the watch of a slave master. So keep your head straight, your back straight, your head held high, and owe it to your black Muslim sisters and brothers who allowed you to be Muslim in these United States of America. We will continue to demand justice for Stefan Clark and for Eric Garner and Ramali Graham and Ayanna Stanley jo Jones and Rakia Boyd and Jonathan Edwards. And I can sit here, sisters and brothers, and name too many names. And the fact that there is a list of names of people who have not gotten justice is outrageous on the watches of the American people. Not one cop gets indicted, but the dead bodies that they put on that ground are indicted and vilified and put on trial even while their bodies are still warm. Sisters and brothers, I want you to leave here today and commit to yourself, to Allah, that you will stand up against injustice like your deen tells you to. And only then and when you do that, will you become a true and whole Muslim that will then be able to smell going to Jannah. Standing up against injustices and brothers is what's going to get you to Jannah. And if you pass over homeless people, if you turn your blind eye when black Muslims are being killed or black people, guess what? You ain't never going to get there. You can say Sister Linda told you that. Salaam alaikum. Sister, thank you. Sister, Takbir. 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 Next, I'd like to bring on a brother. He said he don't want to follow that sister, but you got to, man. He's coming all the way from Ohio. He's coming all the way from, from Ohio, but let's bring him in right because we want to make sure that he understand that Baltimore and Sacramento and the whole world are united because a people united will never be defeated. 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 Put your hands together for our good brother, Councilman Bashir Jones. So I just want to make sure you heard, because you may not have heard, some, some of you ain't good listeners. He said, city councilman Bashir Jones. I want you to leave here proud to know that you got a brother like this, a black, Muslim, unapologetic brother who is in the city council in Ohio. And we need a thousand more Bashir Jones. But for now, I'm good with Bashir Jones repping our people in the state of Ohio. Ohio, baby! MashaAllah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wallahi, we could have wrapped it up right there with Sister Linda, man. I know we all fired up. Inshallah, I just want to give a, a few words and then, uh, and then go. I didn't come to teach you how to whip. I came to teach you slavery is still legit. Forget getting the house and the new whip, because that police gun, that's the new whip. So your new name is Toby Boy, because Baby Boy ain't trying to read. So your new name is Jody, boy, because sometimes you got to get choked just to see. I see Freddy in my dreams, though. I'm talking Kruger and Gray, because this nightmare is a mixture of black and white, and we experience it every single day. They killed our sister Sandra Bland, and then they called it suicide. But they also said we three-fifths. The daggone devil's boy, they always lie. You see what happened to Freddie Gray? <clears throat> they still trying to break a black man's spine. That bullet to Mike Brown head? They still trying to destroy your black man's mind. They choked the breath out of Brother Gardner, different places, but it's all intertwined. You know, the problem with the black man is that he's black, and that's the black man's crime. So forget that Drake and Mill beef. Let me tell you about some real beef. 
It seems black lives real cheap. And because of it, I can't get no real sleep. I got some questions on my heart. When they killed Tamir in that park, was it for that toy gun or was it because he was dark? So I want to know, and I ain't talking about that meal flow. I want to know what the minister going to say, because listen, we just waiting for the go. So it's back to back. And I ain't talking about no Drake track. I'm talking about killings of blacks on blacks and how police are killing us back to back. So I'm charged up. Felonies is how they charge us. They supposed to serve and protect, but in reality, they just disregard us. You want to teach your son to nay nay? You better teach that boy to pray pray because we ending up in jail and Lil Ray Ray just becoming Lil Nay Nay. You see what happened to Freddie Gray? They still trying to break a black man's spine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I want to say to you that this is absolutely imperative that we get involved in this fight. But instead of me speaking to a group that obviously isn't going to change, I'm speaking to you as the Muslims and the human race who are here today. The reality is, is that you ask us to stand for Palestine, and we do. You ask us to stand for Bosnia, and we do. You ask us to stand for everyone else. Now we are asking you to stand for Tamir Rice, and to stand for Stefan Clark and to stand for those that are happening right in our community. I want to say to you that we live in a country where this is not a post-racial society. I don't care about President Barack Obama. One blade of grass never made the lawn look greener. The reality is, is that we are still very much, W.E.B. Du Bois said that in the 20th century, the color line was the issue. In the 21st century, we still have that same issue today. But to the Muslims who are here, particularly the Muslims, I say to you, stop killing black people in your masjids. And I'm not talking about the physical bullets. But what I'm saying is that African Americans and black and brown people who come into your masjids, stop allowing those people to assassinate them and assassinate their character. When you talk to me about Bilal, don't just talk about someone who was freed. Talk about a man who in reality we follow his sunnah every single day around this globe. What was he? What was Bilal before he became a slave? He was a free person. What was black people before we was captured? We were a captured people in this country. But our history does not begin with slavery. It is just a part of it. So I say to you that if you do not stand up for black people, no one will stand up for you. If you don't stand up for black and brown people in this country, I guarantee you they will continue to disrespect your communities. We can no way allow anyone to snatch the hijabs off of our sisters. Are you kidding me, man? Where is the courage of the men? If they can disrespect our women, brother, then it's only a matter of time before they bomb our communities. If our women are afraid and their hijabs are being snatched off, or within the masjids, our women don't feel that their voices are being heard. Our foremost activist in this country right now is our sister Linda. She's on the front lines, and the Muslim women are the face of Islam, and in the massages across this country, we have to stop talking about strands of hair being left out, when in reality, our foremost scholars and warriors in Islam and Islamic tradition were Muslim women. Were Muslim women. The first one to die on the battlefield for Islam, Muslim woman. The first one to embrace the Prophet Muhammad, so Islam, a Muslim woman. So in reality, we know that we have to support our Muslim women because in there, we are supporting the future of this generation. But don't allow them to disrespect our women. I know we hear talking about Black Lives Matter, but I want to talk about the Muslim women for a second. That our Muslim women must feel protected by their men. And they should not be afraid that their hijabs will be pulled off and there's no retribution for those who disrespect our women. What you afraid of? You afraid to die? We are gonna die anyway, brother. You might as well die for something than getting hit by a meteor or something like that. I want to die for something. Don't you want to die for something? If you're willing to die for something, then I already know that you're willing to live for something. But if we love this deed, we must get involved in uplifting and standing for those who are being oppressed in this country. And if you stand up for those people, then in reality, in reality, people will be standing up for you. So as Muslims, we should be foremost on the line to stand up for justice. Are you ready? When you go back to your masajas, if your imams is only talking about wudu and not talking about Stefan Clark, that's a problem. Yes. That's a problem. It's on the members. You're not talking about justice. It's a problem.
that's just as much a part of our deen as anything else. May Allah bless you, may Allah protect you, may Allah guide you, and may Allah give us courage in this battle. Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullah. Let's show them who we are. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, people want to know, people want to know, who we are, who we are, so we tell them, so we tell them, we are the Muslims, we are the Muslims, the mighty, mighty Muslims, the mighty, mighty Muslims, we fight for justice, we fight for justice, we fight for peace, we fight for we fight for justice. We fight for justice. We fight for peace. We fight for peace. The next brother I want to bring on is a true example of that. That's our brother Nihal Awad from Care. Please come on, brother, and, sh and share with us, inshallah, some of your words. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you all. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you. Thank you. May God reward you. Thank you all, Muslims and people of other faith who are here. I have, his, I have heard all the good speakers, sisters, brothers, reminding us of one very important point about who we are as human beings. Allow me to remind ourselves, Muslims, of a very important verse in the Quran. And allow me to share this beautiful verse of the Quran for those people who are not Muslim here. Because this verse in the Quran really describes the problem that we have today in this society and everywhere else. God says in the Quran, O mankind, we have created you from a single male and female and we made you into nations and tribes so that you know one another. The most honorable of you in the sight of God is the most righteous one. Have you heard of this verse before? Raise your hand. This verse makes sure that we are all equal that we are all equal and we have to be treated equally by each other because we are equal in the sight of God. Now what happened? In this verse, we are told to know one another, to appreciate one another. Why? Because we are different, different of skin, skin colors, backgrounds, ethnicities, but we all come from the same two parents. We are equal. And we have to be treated equally and appreciated by everyone, anytime, anywhere in our lives. Now what happened is people acquired a new disease. It's called supremacy. Supremacy is the disease of mankind. And that's why millions upon millions of people have been killed because they look different than other people. And this is the disease of our society here. For centuries, African Americans and people of color have been treated and mistreated and killed just because they look different than the majority of other people. And yes, I say Muslims have a solution to put equality to practice and to stand up for justice, not only when injustice is inflicted upon us, but whenever we witness injustice. And let me remind myself and all of you, what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, that whenever, whenever you witness an injustice, you take action. Whenever you see wrongdoing, you take action with your hand. If you cannot, with your tongue. If you cannot, with at least deny it in your heart. The Prophet did not say, when you see injustice against yourself, or against your, your own people. When you witness an injustice, whether it's by you or other people, whether it's against your people or other people, you take action. Because whenever you witness an, a, a, an injustice, then it is a call to action by you. Otherwise, you are responsible in the, in the eyes of God. 
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I know that we are here because in this big number because we are at the ICNA convention. But let me be honest with you. If there was no ICNA convention, do we come out in this big number? That is the test. We have to show up when it's difficult. When we, ha we have to show up when it's not popular. We have to show up when nobody shows up. You have to be there. You have to stand up for black people, people of color, your people and other people. We cannot and should not be selfish because it is un-Islamic, it is inhuman, only to defend your people, but you don't care other, about other people. You don't do black people a favor when you stand up for justice. You do yourself a favor in the, in the eyes of God. They don't need you. They don't need you. God is in charge, but you need to be there. You need to be proved that you are a human being and you respect dignity, and you are dignifying other people. It is your duty. It is not a privilege for other people. It is their God-given right. This is not about civil rights here. It is a human rights. Every people, every black man, every black woman, every person of color has God-given rights, and we have to be the guardians of these rights, brothers and sisters. When we leave from here, when we leave from here, we have to continue to be persistent. We have to be active. We have to be visible. We have to show up. People should not invite us. We have to invite ourselves when we witness an injustice. Now moving forward. This is an election year. This is an election year. We have to vote and we have to raise our voices. We have to speak to these politicians. We have to speak to the police department chief and hold them accountable to their actions. We cannot afford to see people being mown down and murdered just because no one is speaking for them. There is not enough outrage in our society, brothers and sisters, and that's why people of color continue to be killed. And whenever someone outside those communities is killed, the entire news media is focused on them. Look, someone who bombed people in Texas he was chased by the police. Not a single bullet was fired at him because he was white. Not a single bullet was fired at him. He was arrested. Had he been a black person, had he been Muslim, you can imagine how would he be killed immediately. He was alive and he was arrested alive. There is double standard here. And this double standard will continue because we are not outraged enough. So let's show the outrage. Let's be politically organized and put our voice where we need to put our voice. This is an election year and I'm not, I'm not political, I'm not partisan, but also I cannot be neutral in this fight. We have to have this fight in, the, in November and before November. And before I conclude, on May 6th and 7th and 8th, we have a National Advocacy Day in Washington, D.C. Come and organize yourself. Meet with your members of Congress. And Black Lives Matter should be on the top of our agenda to speak to our representatives and provide protection for African Americans, for DACA dreamers, for other communities of color. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Show me what solidarity looks like. This is what solidarity looks like. Brothers and sisters, I cannot hear you. Show me what solidarity looks like. Show me what solidarity looks like. This is what solidarity looks like. This is what solidarity looks like. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What happens if we don't get it? Shut it down. Shut it down. Brothers and sisters, shut it down. Our next speaker is going to be Imam Safir Rab. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's good to see everybody out here today. And you know, we have to be students of history in order to know what the future is to become and is to be like. The history of Islam in America is crucially important for not only Muslims to know, but non-Muslims to know. 
But even the Muslims don't know well enough the history of Islam in America, and that it's the history of Islam in America that pronounces that Islam in this country has always been about social justice. It's been about being able to come back to and identify with and find identity in a narrative and an identity that connects us directly to Almighty God Allah. That's what brought the idea of black and the nomenclature of black to black people. It wasn't, it, before we'd be, we'd, be, we'd be saying Negro lives matter or colored lives matter. Now we say because of Islam in America, black lives matter. We should know that. We should know that. And it is, it is the association of that and the attachment of that idea and the notion of that idea that really brings to our awareness that black people, because of this history in America, all black people, the ones who are, 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 are stolen, descendants of those stolen from Africa and brought here against their will, many of whom were Muslim. And Al-Islam has come to steal us back. Now, in the beginning of Islam in America and the idea of social justice attached to it, we really meant if we don't get justice, there's going to be some problems around here. And we still mean that. And there are thousands and thousands of Muslims that are indigenous to this country and have your back. They're, they have a dangerous game going around on the internet punching Muslim, running up to Muslims and punching Muslim women. Identifying as Muslim. Well, you better not punch a Muslim. I'm telling you right now. Because there are thousands of people who identify with Al-Islam, Muslim and non-Muslim, that won't have that. We have to become people who embrace the idea of protecting the orphan. And there's no father country for African Americans. There's no mother country outside of the United States of America for African Americans. And Almighty God Allah says in the Holy Quran, have you seen the liar? Have you seen who lies against this religion? It's those who don't take care of the orphan. Take care of the orphan people. Those who don't take care, feed the poor. Those who don't feed the hungry. This is the crux, the essence of our religion. Not to come to a big convention and talk to ourselves about being perfect. It's to come to a big convention and have rallies like this one and bazaars like that one and powerful sessions that inspire us in the way Ikna has done and others will continue to do. So all brothers and sisters, I'm fired up and anxious to link up with you. Now, I should say this one other point, that most of the people here that are young and we've inherited what our parents and our former generation has, has really birthed us into. We were born inheriting the most precious gift next to our humanity that we possibly can have, which is the way to navigate through this life at Islam. If you have that gift, you need to be teaching that gift. You need to link with that gift. Don't put anything in this world above that gift. And that gift demands that you preserve life and connect with those who preserve life and recognize that one life taken is like taking the life of all of humanity put together. Link with, link with us, brothers and sisters. Don't let artificial divides divide us. Don't let false narratives, false fake news, whatever you want to call it, make it something that is contrived that defines our relationship with one another. Your humanity is above your Islam even. Because your concept of Islam can be wrong, but your humanity is your God-given right. No matter what color you are, no matter what nation you're from, right here to, today we have people who are being killed, shot, for no other reason than the color of their skin. That's a crime against humanity. That's something that we can't afford to divide along the lines of race or divide along its response along the lines of religion. We have an obligation to do something. Are you with me? Yeah. I want to hear you with me. Yeah. All right, well, let's do something about it. And inshallah, we're going to have greater later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Next, I'd like to bring on one of our pioneers here who's been fighting for civil rights of all people.
around the country, but definitely in the city of Baltimore. My Imam, Imam Earl Alameen. Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm not going to speak long because as an elder, I can, ha I can do that. All right? I remember in 1968 in most cities around America, things went, I was, a, I was a junior in high school in 1968. So if you do the math, you know how old I am. But what I'm going to say to you, you young people, that when you study movements in America around social justice, the crux of all of those movements are young people. Now, you must develop muscles, not just spiritual muscles, physical muscles, intellectual muscles. If you don't, atrophy sets in. You know what atrophy is? It's when you don't use your muscles. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed us in this place, here in the wilderness of North America, for us to establish freedom, justice, and equality. And if, in fact, you don't establish freedom, justice, and equality, you will suffer from atrophy. Your muscles will get weak. In order for you to get stronger, you have to go up against something. That's the law. So, dear brothers and sisters, establish yourselves, whatever city that you're from, go back to that city the neighborhood that you live in. If you were to move tonight from the neighborhood that you live in, would you be missed? The masjid that you attend if you never came back to that, would you be missed? And if in fact you would be missed in your neighborhood and in your masjid, then you're suffering from atrophy. So strengthen yourselves. Let's move toward the destiny and let's establish freedom justice and equality here in the wilderness of North America. Assalamu alaikum. No justice, no peace. 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 Next, I'm going to call a youth speaker, Fatima Yunus, who is one of the co-organizers of the Women's March here locally in Maryland. We're so honored to have her with us. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. So let me just tell you what happened when I first heard about Stefan Clark. I wake up one day, Alton Sterling, his, the person who murdered him, does not get in trouble, and I hear that Stefan Clark was murdered at the hands of police, and I'm outraged, just as I am for every other unarmed black person who was killed. And then, two weeks later, I, found out, I find out he's Muslim. And I know that a lot of Muslims have been supporting Black Lives Matter right from the start. But I also know that a lot of other Muslims did not even know that uh, Stefan Clark had been killed. And when I told them, hey, did you know that Stefan Clark is Muslim? They're like, who's Stefan Clark? And I had to explain it to them. And I was upset that I had to explain it to them because it makes me so mad that people don't pay attention. You need to be paying attention. You need to be outraged. And I'm especially talking to the young people here because I'm 17 years old. And I was one of the people who helped organize the national school walkouts. 800,000 of us also marched down to the Capitol for March for Our Lives. Why are not the same amount of people fighting for Stefan Clark and the other unarmed black people that were shot at the hands of police? It makes me, I'm outraged that he was shot, but I'm even more outraged at the lack of outrage for Stefan Clark and for the other unarmed black people who were shot. Because it's not fair that we value lives over other lives. Why is the life of a student killed at Parkland more important than the life of Stefan Clark, or the life of Tamir Rice, who was 12 years old, or the life of Mike Brown, or the life of Trayvon Martin. It's great to be here at a rally, and I'm going to keep this short, but the real work happens in our communities, in our homes, and the real work happens when we're not all here standing at a rally in front of the cameras. The real work happens when we got two little sons that were left behind when their father was murdered and we need to take care of them and we need to make sure they're doing okay. There's a wife, the wife of Stefan Clark, who does not have her husband beside her anymore to help her. There's so many people who have been affected by this and we, 
Stefan Clark was a black Muslim American, we should be standing by our black Muslim sisters and brothers and making sure that they're okay and telling them we love you, we appreciate you, we're here for you. So I'm talking to the youth, we can make a change. Like I said, there were 800,000 of us that marched down to the Capitol on that day of March for Our Lives for the students at Parkland. All of us should be doing the same exact thing for the unarmed black people who are shot and killed every single day at the hands of police. I don't ever want to hear about us caring about a single issue. And when we talk about gun violence, we also need to start talking about gun violence against black people. Because police brutality is a form of gun violence. We can't be sitting here talking about this gun violence issue and saying, oh, it's just for school shootings, because it's not. We need to pay attention and we need to make sure it's intersectional because otherwise, only, if we're only one group of people is safe, then none of us are safe. Yep. So after this rally, I want to see people organizing actions. I want to see people reaching out to other people in their lives to make sure that they're okay, to, make sure, to let them know that we appreciate them and that we hear them and that we see them. And I want to see every single youth who showed up today do something for these people after. Because we're not going to win as long as we only keep caring about what we, what we hear about the most in the media, which is Parkland. It's great that we all went to March for Our Lives, and I'm so proud it happened. But I also want to see the exact same amount of outrage. And I want to see people mourning uh, all the unarmed black people who were shot and killed the same way they mourned for the students at Parkland. Salaam alaikum. Takbir! 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 The sister is right. The brother was left, his children were left, he was left dead, his children are left without a father, they're going to need services. They're going to need mental health services. His wife is going to need assistance every single day, so it just doesn't start here at this rally. This is where it starts, and it's up to each and every one of you. Each and every one of you, from the youngest person here to the oldest person here, to the most wealthiest person here, to the person that has no money, it is up to each and every one of you to fight for justice every single day. So I have a brother here that wants to, uh, he's going to help to to bring some of this uh, to, not to a complete close, but he's going to be one of our last speakers, Brother Mazen Mukhtar from Mass. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. His name was Stefan Clark. Don't forget it. Because if you want to dehumanize somebody, you strip them of their name, you strip them of their identity, they don't have a story, they're a statistic, and they become part of a big statistic. 264 this year so far, we are on track to beating the past records. How many people are murdered by police in one year? His name was Stefan Clark. Don't forget it. What was his name? Don't forget it. He has children. Don't forget it. But I want to say that if we're going to create change, it has to start with us. We must remove from ourselves even the subtlest forms of racism that exist within ourselves, within our own hearts. Care for people because of compassion, because of the bond of the Creator, not because they look like us or they share our background. What was his name? Don't forget it. Do you remember that when Muslims were oppressed, the very first population, the very first kingdom that opened its doors to the protection of Muslims who are light-skinned was a dark-skinned kingdom? Does anybody remember this? The first people to protect Muslims were dark skins. They were black Africans. It's not only Bilal. It is a whole population that protected Islam. So it is part of our deen. Now, Stefan, what was his name? Stefan Clark. He will no longer suffer racism ever again. He will no longer ever again suffer injustice. No longer again will he experience bigotry. Never again. But we are here and we have a chance to make a difference for those who are still alive, for our community. From East to West, from Freddie to Stefan. What was his name? Stefan Clark. From East to West, we have a problem in this country. And we must be part of the solution. To be a Muslim is to be people on a mission. To, be, to stay at home and to be quiet is not good enough.
We must act. So I ask myself and I ask all of us, what was his name? Clark. What was his name? Clark. What was his name? Clark. Don't forget it. <laughs> Next, I would like to call up uh, a youth that we have here that's going to share some uh, spoken word. And if she can come up towards the front, if she is still uh, around and still with us. Sister Maheen Ha, are you here? No, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> All right. So inshallah, it looks like that, um, I, I don't know if she's still here yet. I want to kind of bring all of this to, to a close and to a wrap because I know that we're about to head home. Please understand that this does not stop here. It starts here. But let's say his name one more time. What was his name? Clark. What was his name? Clark. What was his name? Let's remember that when we're going back and we're making our prayers, let's pray for his family. Let's pray for our family and we'll pray for our safety. Please get home safe. Thank you for coming out today. Inshallah, let's put our hands together for those that want to clap. Thank you for coming out. No, make it louder. You all set out here. Let's make it louder.